Well, welcome back to Loaded Landscapes. My name's Simon Plant, and today I'm going to show you a slightly old school way of replacing a sky within Photoshop. So, more often than not, there's a good chance with an image like this, you would go and grab the Quick Selection tool and run that over the image. And on the face of it, you think, yeah, selected the sky, great. But when you uh, zoom in, you sometimes find that uh, it's actually missed a fair bit of uh, what you want trying to select and you have to go in and refine that and start adding to the selection and taking away from the selection and sometimes it can get a bit fiddly um, another way uh, you can do this and there's several ways I'm not saying this is the only way of selections making selections because there, there clearly isn't there's lots of different ways of doing it but this way is a bit of an old school way using the channels um, here uh, which is not a place I go to very often these days uh, like I said it used to be used a lot in masking and we can highlight each channel and what we're looking for is the channel that gives us the greatest contrast in this image between the sky and the land and that would be in this picture the red channel okay by command and control clicking on that channel we can bring that up as a selection highlight the layer we're working on and then go down here to the add layer mask and click on that and that gonna, that's going to give us just get rid of that vector mask that's going to give us a selection uh, it's in the wrong way around at the moment so we just um, go on command or control I which will invert the selection and now we've got a selection which is the right way around I'm gonna alt or option click on the mask and you can see what we've got we've basically got a, a like a, a black and white negative of our image okay so this is a great starting point the good thing about this is it's, it's already selected all the trees and those fine details which we didn't get with the quick selection tool so what we need to do now is really just go in and refine this mask very carefully uh, and to give us a, a much better selection of the sky area so how do we refine this mask okay so there's a couple of ways of doing this and uh well two stages i should say we're first going to get something like uh, the lasso tool and on the most part of this image we can just come in with the lasso tool, very kind of half cocked, you should say, um, and just fill that with the paint bucket tool with white, like so, and that's good enough. Same with the, with the sky, we want this to go black, so I'm just going to make a selection like so, and I'm going to fill that again with the paint bucket tool with black this time. And that's most of the mask already done straight away. Where we've got to be a bit more careful is on the areas and the transitions. Okay, I'm always going on about transitions in my video, but that's where you've got to be, uh, you know, a bit more careful to get a really nice uh, transition between the white and the black, which is where the mask is going to uh, obviously join. Okay, to do that, we're going to get the um, dodge and burn tool. So let's start off with the burn tool. Okay, exposure down quite low, maybe as low as 5%. And it doesn't matter towards the top here, but towards this edge, we're going to go very lightly over the edge. We, what we don't want to do is turn this too dark too soon, okay? Because uh, we're going to start losing detail. So we don't want it to do it all in one go and do it too heavy handed. I'm not going to worry about these other areas, I'm just on about, worried about the joy now where we're got the white meets the, the black meets the buildings okay uh, and again just go very carefully around the lamppost there and around this area of the trees okay so I've carried on with that I'm, I have turned the exposure up to about 12 percent 10 or 12 percent and then further down where it's not right on the edge we can obviously move that along a bit quicker let's turn up a little bit more around here if you've got any really tricky areas, you can get the paint brush tool and just paint white on the mask. Let's come along here a bit. Okay, I'll get the uh, paint brush tool now. Uh, make sure that white's in the foreground. And uh, we're going to have the flow down quite low there. sometimes that can be a help just to paint in any bits 
like that. Okay, so let me just stop there. I'm going to carry on a little bit more, and uh, in a second, we'll have a look at the uh, at the mask and see how it's looking uh, with the with the sky in place. So I've carried on with that. It's still not perfect yet, but that, that's absolutely fine. Um, but let's alter option click on the mask and have a look how it looks with the sky. Here's our sky below. You can see there's a little bit more work to do here, but we've still got those edges. There's a little bit of fringing. Um, so a little bit more work to do there. This side, where the sky is lighter, actually it's not so bad. It's not too bad at all. In fact, I'd be reluctant to do too much more to that. There's a little bit of work here. Um, so we can just basically go in and use the, um, use the lasso tool around the very edge of there. This, that's the quickest way of removing this. And with the white in the background, just going to get rid of that. And then back to the dodge tool. These are quite hard edges on this building, so uh, you could even go around the pen tool if you wanted to, but I think this will do us enough. It's these edges here, the fine details, you've got to be more careful of, as I said, because you can easily mess those up quite quickly. So I'm going to drop my exposure down now, like so. And the other problem we had, I think, was this end here. So bit by bit, get rid of that hard line. And that is nearly there. So uh, the other thing we can do if we need to is go to uh, one of the mask is highlighted image adjust and curves. Again, um, this is going to obviously uh, increase the blacks and increase the whites, increase the contrast. So, um, but if you go too far again, we're going to lose that nice edge transition. So don't overdo it. But that can help us a little bit. Um, last bit. I think we we'll do the burn tool on this guy. Now, obviously, while you're watching this, you're probably thinking, well, this is a long or winded process. But actually, um, it's not. It's probably, all in all, this mask has probably taken me less than five minutes to produce. So it doesn't take too long at all. And the results are better than what you're getting it with uh, the traditional tools that we've got now. Then uh, I think it's worth it. Okay, so let's have a quick look. That's not bad at all. There's a couple of little bits we can still do with this. I'm going to show you another old trick to take care of some of this fringing in the next section. So overall, the mask is coming together really nicely, um, especially at this end where it's lighter. We're not seeing any white fringing because it kind of matches the sky we've put in. A little bit here, but nothing uh, that just can't be uh, sorted out quite quickly. The problems we've got is is along here. Now, with these sort of edges, you may be quite used to going into the uh, into the selection and go to the selector mask or the refine edge, as it was called. And again, you've got all sorts of options there. You can add more contrast to the selection you can feather selection contract it expand it etc and that's great but that's done on, a, on on the whole image and so some of these edges are quite sharp edges and some of them are quite soft and uh, one size doesn't fit all so what I would have to do in that case using the uh, using the selector mask uh, edge function is to do it twice do one mask for this area maybe and another mask say for this area or there's another old old school tip which can be a lot quicker, and that is it's called um, and I always forget the name of this. It's called the choke and spread, choke and spread. Okay, and it's simply this: you highlight the mask again, you get a selection tool, you go around the edge of the area you want to adjust, and you simply go to image adjust. And curves okay and what we're going to do is get rid of the white fringing and we do that in this case by pulling the curve down and you'll see if I push it up we get more of the white if I pull it down we get rid of some of that edge okay so click OK and that's done it's gone now what's happening well quite simply let me just go back if I highlight the mask and we'll do that again image adjust curves what we're actually doing is either adding more white 
expanding the selection or we're contracting it by adding more black. If we go too far, we're going to ru ruin those lovely edges. But what it's doing is, is obviously getting helping us getting rid of that fringing. So let me go back again. So make a selection, image adjust curves, and most of the time if you've got a light fringe, then you want to uh, darken that, and that can get rid of some of that quite nicely and the good thing about this you can do it selectively so on this edge along here we certainly don't want the same settings so we can do a different curve maybe not so much or maybe we need to add a bit and in fact here uh, we are getting a little bit of a halo around the edge and it probably would benefit from us going a little bit lighter there so let's have a quick look yeah, so that needs a little bit more work there, but for this video, that's fine. Um, so it's very, very handy and very quick to use, and you haven't got to adjust one part of the image only to bugger up the other part that you've uh, obviously laboured over. So you can selectively alter just the areas you need to, like so. Sometimes you might have to go over areas twice, like this one. And then other times you might have to, heavens forbid, go in and manually clean up. And I think probably around here we'll need a little bit of more TLC and maybe we come in with uh, with the brush tool or something just to clean up some of those edges. Um, they've gone a little bit soft as well. So, uh, so that's another little tip and that's already looking fantastic there. The other thing we haven't done, obviously, and there's still a bit more work to do on this edge, but I think you get the idea, I'm not going to bore you to death, is obviously we need to match the sky. So by darkening the sky, that may well help the cores as well uh, somewhat in getting the edge fitting a bit better. So it's a good idea to get that in place as well while you're masking. So uh, you can see what that's going to look like. It will change. The mask will change again if you darken the image or lighten it. And that looks okay. So there you go. So I, ho I hope that makes a bit of sense. As I said, I I'm not trying to regress you into old um, old techniques, but sometimes the old techniques work better than the new ones or you know, on some images. And like I said, the masking and selection tools available in Photoshop now are fantastic. And they do a really good job on the most part, but there's still sometimes, like this image, where the older techniques can, uh, can uh, obviously really help you out and uh, actually save you more time. Thanks for watching and I hope to catch you on the next video. Cheers.